Good day to you wherever you are in the world. Today, I'm going to have a cello chat with you about, well, the cello. Did you know that the cello is the number one classical ensemble instrument selected by amateurs that didn't go conservatory, that did not have a background in music? For anyone that's an amateur that wasn't a child, so you began in your later teenage or adult years, a lot of you have listened to different types of music and decided, oh, I really like the sound of that instrument. Did you know that the cello is one of the most unoffensive instruments to play? It has a very soft tone. It doesn't get too high and it doesn't get too low. It can't get too loud and it has this very warm sense to it. So you've selected a really pretty instrument. It is the number one instrument for adult beginners, if you're one of those. So I wanted to share a little bit with you because it's a fun thing to do, to play and to teach. But in the end, you think like, wow, why didn't I choose the violin? We probably did, and now you're here because the violin's super difficult to play. Why didn't you choose the flute? or the clarinet, or the trombone. All three of those instruments require something called armature, something here, muscles that you develop in your mouth. So that's difficult too. If you're not twisting your arm, and if you're not you know, pinching the bottom part of your jaw together, then what are you gonna do if you wanna play a classical ensemble piece? Well, that eliminates all of the wind section and if you want to play percussion, then well, that's going to be pretty loud. And if you want to twist your arm a lot and annoy your neighbors with high, her terrible notes, then you can play the violin. But the cello, the cello is incredibly comfortable to play. Look at this. All you do is just raise your arm and there you are. I'm not even trying. I'm, it's not because I've played it all my life. It's just right there. And that's all you need to do when you play your instrument. You need to relax and enjoy it. It sits comfortably. Did you know that cello players, we are the most lazy of all players? We have to sit. Bassoon players can stand. Tuba players can stand. Bass players can stand. All the instruments that are larger than us. Even the massive, you know, bass saxophones and the contrabass uh, clarinets, those things can be strapped along the back of your neck and you can hold them. But no, the cello requires you to sit. There's an awfully funny uh, scene in a Woody Allen movie where he joins a, a marching band and he's trying to march along. He's got a chair and he's moving along. It's a little cute scene in there. So yes. If you're just beginning at this and you're watching this channel, or you're just looking through the videos of different players and maybe you've seen piano guys or you've seen two cellos and you're thinking, wow, those guys play amazing. Or maybe you hear the swan one day and you just want to. One day be able to close your eyes and dream of another place. Well, you're in the right. You're in the right area. You're with the right teacher. You're on the right channel here on YouTube because that's what I want to help you do. If you never find a teacher out there or you maybe you're too ashamed to ask because sometimes we get to a certain level and we simply don't want to ask for help or it's expensive. Well, I'm here to do as much as I can to help you understand this instrument. And I'm going to explain something about what I just did. Here's a thing. Why do cello players close our eyes when we play instrument? Why do we do that? Well, there's a lot of different things. There's no right or wrong answer. The reason is simple. You want to get immersed in your music. You're already basically hugging your instrument. But when you close your eyes, you're completely present in the notes. You're completely there, not just with the composer, but with the picture that the composer's trying to paint through you. That's essential to remember. When you're playing music, you aren't 
just making notes happen. You are making music. Which brings me to another point. When you play something, if you have music in front of you, why is the music there? Is it there to read? No. Music is for reference. That's all it is. To truly engage your audience and the music and to make it come alive, you must have those notes by heart. Here in France, there's a phrase for that we call, say, par cœur. And that just means by heart. They don't say, you know, by memory, they say by heart. Because when you do something by heart, you're not just recalling the technicality of it that a mind would do, but you are expressing through who you are, through your instrument. And it is essential, especially for beginners, to select a piece that you connect with. Now I'll do with this with all of my players out there. I ask them, when you join my studio, I've always asked you, what do you want to play? Now, you, if you're looking for a cello teacher and you go and, you, and they interview you and you are, you know, are nervous or whatever, and they ask you, what do you want to play? You know, they should ask you that question. What do you want to do? You can go to those players, excuse me, those teachers that always say, I learned this way and this is the way you will learn, throw you some technical books and some etude books and you know, get you doing your Bach. And if that's you, then go right ahead. But for a great majority of players that are more mature, you're probably not going to connect with that type of teaching. You want to connect with something. There's a reason why you have this cello and there's a reason why you're watching this channel. Because if you're a kid, you've already been thrown to years of, years of schooling and you've probably gone to the conservatory. But if you're watching me today and we're sharing this music as you've put up tons of like over, over 170 videos dedicated to cello music on this channel, then you're looking for something a little bit different. Maybe you're looking for free scores or maybe you just want to learn at your own pace. But if you've gotten to this far in this video and in my channel, then I want you to go out there and find a piece that you truly and honestly connect with and don't be ashamed about it. If it is something that you heard once in a rock show or heard an R&B song or in a movie or even in a cartoon, if you connect with it, if it's something that speaks to you, then you should try to play it. It doesn't matter the genre. It doesn't matter how childish or goofy you may feel the song is. Because if you connect with it, that is how you will not play notes, but you will make music. Now recently I've been a little slacker on giving my videos, my channel here, any videos, and I'm sorry about that. Because I have to be a little bit honest with you, I, we had an we had a unexpected loss here in um, where I moved. I moved to France and um, one of the first people that has been always friendly to me, uh, he passed. He passed uh, rather suddenly um, in a car accident. One day he was here and the next day he wasn't. And he lit out, he lived out in the countryside and he, very far. <laughs> And it was always one of those situations where me and my fiance would say, oh, we'll visit him another day. We'll visit, we'll go see them another weekend when the weather's nice. Well, the weather's nice today and he's gone. And so it was pretty rough around here and I'm sorry for, for not, you know, giving videos. I usually do them every week, but I totally slacked on that. And I wrote a song, I'll be, I'll be uploading that later. I wrote a song about it, about it, and it's, it was super emotional, and I, I had to stop. But it's super pretty. I'll be singing on my guitar, and um, and it's it's you know I was inspired by these events, and it just you know makes me think about those songs that you super connect with, and so I'm going to play you a song that I've already uploaded, but I just feel the need to to play it again because to show you that 
what it means to just play notes and what it means to actually connect with the music. And I am completely unashamed to admit that this is a Disney song. It's from a Disney movie I, I really haven't even watched. I love the tune. I've not really watched the movie, but it speaks to me. It speaks to me because I live very far from the U.S. now, and, and it's, it's very, it's, it's got this air about it of, of melancholy, if you will. Um, so I'm just going to play the notes as if I'm just trying to play really, you know, really good in tune and technically correct. And then I'll play second and I'll make music. So first is playing notes. As you see, I didn't use vibrato because many of you are beginners and you don't know how to do this. And I haven't taught this to you yet, if you're using this channel. <laughs> so I'm going to play now a second time and I'm going to, I'm going to make music. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do it for that guy that, that we recently lost and um, he's up there in that sky somewhere. So, this is for you, Thierry. Sorry, I had to gather myself. Now, it doesn't matter where you get your inspiration from. It's a Disney tune. But it speaks to me. And so, find a piece. Let it speak to you. Make music. Do your practicing. Learn the notes. Learn the tonality. I put tapes on here to help you guys. I don't like playing with them, but I still do it. And then choose that time where you're ready. And you may play some wrong notes, but you may play some great notes. And that will be the moment that you will know you're making music. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. We're going to learn a lot.